Want to meet the guy who wrote this? Johann Sebastian Bach. He'd be over 330 years old by now. He lived for 65 years, almost twice as long as Mozart. If you want to impress people, say, Ah, oh, yes, Bach, the Baroque period, yes. He's one of classical music's most famous composers. He was born 70 years after Shakespeare and he died six years before Mozart. He lived at the same time as the scientist Isaac Newton and the founding fathers of the USA, George Washington and Benjamin Franklin. Bach was born in Eisenach in the middle of Germany in 1685. Remember, Germany wasn't a country back then, just a bunch of little states run by princes and dukes. It won't surprise you that he was born into a monster musical family. Everyone was either playing or composing music. His dad was head of the town musicians, and all his uncles earned their living by playing. When he was only ten, poor chap, his mother and then his father died. He had to move in with his older brother. Johann Christoph taught him tons about music, like playing the keyboard and copying and composing music, just like learning a new language. At 15, Bach won a singing scholarship to St Michael's, a smart boarding school where he mixed with rich boys. And he got to play the school organ. He practised so much and he got so good that it wasn't long before the Duke of Weimar offered him his first job as court musician. Like with all first jobs, Bach had to start at the bottom cleaning and tidying, but soon he was in charge of the choir and playing the organ. That's when he wrote his famous Toccata. It was also about this time that he married his cousin, Maria Barbara, and they had seven children. Only four made it to adulthood and two of Bach's sons grew up to be well-known composers themselves. Johann Sebastian had high standards and he thought the Duke's choir was dreadful. Annoyed, he disappeared from his work to go off and see the superstar organist Buxtehude perform in a town 450 kilometres away. And he walked there. And remember, playing the organ back then was a bit like playing the electric guitar is today really quite cool. The Duke must have forgiven Bach because he promoted him to director of music. Now he could work with high quality musicians in an orchestra and work on composing. He wrote a bunch of preludes and fugues in every major and minor key known as the well-tempered clavier. He was getting really good. As his reputation grew he got a job offer from the Prince of Coton. Don't go, said the Duke of Weimar to his musical superstar, but Bach was off. Serious church music didn't interest the prince, but he was really into singing, and he played in the court orchestra. During this time, Bach focused on music for violins, flutes and lutes and orchestras. The best example is the Brandenburg Concertos, which he composed as a present for the nobleman, Lord Brandenburg. After six years with the Prince in Coton, Bach moved to the city of Leipzig to start the best job in music, the Thomas Cantor. What's that? He composed and performed music for not just one, but for four churches in Leipzig. Imagine the workload. He stayed in this job for the rest of his life, writing, composing, rehearsing and performing, The Goldberg Variations are a set of 30 variations on one tune written for a Russian ambassador who couldn't sleep. Bach's music helped him nod off. For much of his life, Bach was a healthy man, but as he got older he had problems with his eyesight. At 65 he decided to have eye surgery, which went wrong. made him blind and he died shortly afterwards. Johann Sebastian Bach was known as a brilliant organist in his lifetime, but we know him today as one of the greatest composers who ever lived. He left us well over a thousand pieces of music to enjoy. Music for chilling, tunes for sleeping,
pieces to practice on the piano. Music to jump for joy to. Check them out for yourself.